country music stars are accustomed to seeing their names and lights in Nashville, Tennessee. But this week, the leading ladies of figure skating are lighting up Music City, USA. Roberts. Wide World of Sports first broadcast these championships in 1964, and this weekend will bring you the preeminent competition in U.S. figure skating for the 34th consecutive year. Tonight we'll have the ladies free skate featuring world and U.S. champion Michelle Kwan. We'll bring that to you live, as well as the pairs free skate. And then tomorrow we'll return to Nashville to see another world champion, Todd Eldridge, defend his national title, and we'll also have the free dance. The favorites in the pairs competition are Jenny Mino and Todd Sand, the three-time defending champions and two-time world bronze medalist. But in the short program on Wednesday night, the unexpected occurred in the final element, a forward inside death spiral. Todd's left skate slipped out from under him, and Jenny fell to the ice. No one was as shocked as Jenny and Todd. After the short program, Jenny and Todd are in second place behind Kyoko Ina and Jason Dungeon. Shelby Lyons and Brian Wells are in third place. For more of the pairs competition, let's join Terry Gannon, Peggy Fleming, and Dick Button. Robin, thank you. It may indeed be true that it is tougher to stay at the top than to arrive there. There's been a lot of pressure on Jenny Mino and Todd Sand this week. And Peggy, does that explain what happened to them in the short program? Well, Terry, I think this was a real wake-up call for Jenny and Todd. After their disastrous short program, Jenny said, we did something we should never do at this level. We took it for granted. And she's right. You can never relax out there. You have to focus on every element and remember your technique on even the simplest moves. Now they need to focus on a great free skate and they need to have only positive thoughts. This is when disciplined training habits really come into play. Well, they also need to focus on Kyoko Ina and Jason Dungeon right now, who are the leaders after the short program. Dick, that was the same situation a year ago. Mino and San came back. How do you size up this battle between one and two? 
but one of the things is that you must remember what one of the basic rules of pair skating is, and that is that two shall skate as one. Now, Mino and Sand have always had good unison, and this year they've made even further strides in this regard. Ina and Dungeon, on the other hand, have spent a lot of time talking about their unison. Now, they may win tonight, depending upon whether Mino and Sand bomb, as they did in the short program, but Ina and Dungeon will have to stop talking about gelling and begin to gel if they're ever going to be great pair skaters. They represent the Joint Skating Club in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, and we will be skating to highlights from the score to Leonard Bernstein's Broadway musical, West Side Story. And getting Story. us underway here in the here Paris Free Skate, Daniel which Hartzell accounts for two-thirds of the overall score. The reigning junior world champion, 16-year-old Danielle Hartzell and her brother, 19-year-old Steve. One of the few brother-sister pairs since the Kaufmans and the Carruthers. And I think this is a good music choice for them because it's exciting, it's powerful, and very familiar to the audience. West Side Story. And these are the three most difficult moves they have. First, a split, triple twist lift. And then what has now become necessary for pair skaters, side-by-side -side triple toe jumps. Very nicely done. And finally, one of the younger teams that does a throw triple talk out. Good for her. Their practices all week have been going very well for them. Double axle is a forward takeoff jump, an edge that is never secure. Danielle and Steve won the junior national title in 1995 before competing at last year's national championships in the senior division and finishing eighth. At this year's junior world, they were actually in fourth place after the short program and won and they pulled off the free skate of their lives. They are currently in fifth place, trying to at least move up to a top three spot and perhaps a spot on the world team. Now watching this throw double axel, the landing, the height, the distance, and the landing. Really tough to be able to hold that edge.
pitching. They really did well. Nice energy. The free skate of Danielle and Steve Hartzell will have their marks and the performance of the leaders. They've never won a national championship. Ina and Dungeon skate when we come back. You really don't win the big events in front of the TV cameras and huge crowds. You win them before. Months, even years before. At 4.30 in the morning at cold, empty ice rinks, where dreamers dream their dreams. Because of this dedication, State Farm is proud to be a sponsor of premier figure skating events throughout the year. We are back in Nashville as the pair's free skate is underway. Danielle and Steve Hartzell awaiting their marks. And the first set is for technical merit. There they are. They range from 5.0 up to 5.6. 5.5. About But one moment that they had in the competition that was not their best was this side-by-side -side double axle, double toe combination. Now watch the takeoff, that forward outside edge. She skidded up into the air, didn't get a good lean in the body, and uh, did not complete it well. That jump can be treacherous. I don't care how many times you've done it. And the marks for presentation, ranging from 5.1 up to 5.5 for Hartzell and Hartzell. Taking the ice next will be the current leaders. They are also the three-time U.S. silver medalist. For an up-close and personal look at Kyoko Ina and Jason Dungeon, here's Robin Roberts. They are two opposites with a common goal. Kyoko Ina grew up in New York City. When it's too quiet at night, it sort of bothers me. It almost scares me because I don't hear the sirens or just people. Michigan's countryside is Jason Dungeon's home. It's just outdoors, just back to nature and just quiet, peaceful time. The whole opposite the track, don't they? Unlike husband and wife team Jenny Mino and Todd Sand, off the ice, this pair leads separate lives. But on the ice, they share their greatest love. We are not lovers, and we do get along. We enjoy working together and we enjoy the success we've had together. But everything is done together as a business partnership. While these business partners have the speed and the big tricks, without the intimacy, can these friends emote the passion and love they have for skating? The problem that we've had is people perceive us as a certain way. And you watch other teams, and if they are married, of course you're going to perceive passion in their skating. But is it passion any more than what we have? Because we have a passion for skating. At last year's Nationals, this passion earned Kyoko and Jason first place going into the long program. They skated what seemed to many to be their best performance ever. Their hard work and effort on communicating has totally paid off. Great performance. Very nice performance, isn't it? That's wonderful to see. Jenny and Todd took a fall in the long program, but went on to win anyway with their romantic presentation. It was a very, very disappointing event for me personally, but I felt terrible for Yoke and Jason, and uh, the event was judged on past merit. It wasn't judged on the performance of that day. Um, they skated an excellent short program. They did a wonderful long program. And uh, I mean, all my coaching friends and, and officials that I've known for a long period of time felt that they deserved the title. Patience is the art of waiting, the knowledge of time. How to pick your moments, how to bite your tongue. After a second place finish for the third consecutive year, they know their persistence will bring them another moment. I think right now that the national championship is uh, something we really want. We've wanted it for several years now. I think, I think at this point, though, we're ready to take it. They were not at all happy about the way things turned out in San Jose a year ago and believe that they deserve better than second place where they have been since 1994. They are the leaders, though, heading into this free skate. Kyoko Ina and Jason Dungeon.
beginning of their program is the most difficult part. They have quite a few elements in these first few moves. The first one is a throw, triple south out. Nice high, solid landing. Coming out of it. Side by side, triple toe loop. beginning for them. They're skating to the Grand Canyon Suite by the Cincinnati Philharmonic. And besides their three silver medals at these championships, they also finished sixth at the World a year ago. Watch the triple twist into a pro triple loop that they do coming up very shortly. Big move, good speed. Split triple twist. And a turn. And a triple loop. Wow. Beautifully done. Really exquisite. She's a wonderful athlete, the way she sustains those throw jumps. She gets such spring from the... certainly was an interesting one and one that looked that it so it was working very well and obviously it's pleased this audience tremendously well they have certainly put the pressure on Jenny Mino and Todd Sand in in dungeon the leaders heading into this free skate if Mino and Sand are to repeat as national champions they better have a spectacular free skate and so much for my criticizing them for not being having great unison they seem to have it wonderfully in this program 
Kyoko Ina and Well, we're back Jason in Nashville, Dungeon. and Kyoko Ina and Jason Dungeon in their free skate. You could see them gain confidence and get more relaxed as it went on. They lost their technical merit marks. 5.7 up to 5.9. 5.8. 5.8. 5.8. 5.8. And here's a look at the opening of their program, the throw triple sow cow that sets the tone of this whole number. Very solid. And they executed all of these difficult moves. Triple toe loop following. Very solid. Amino and Santa yet to skate. Now these marks are very good. There is plenty of room left over uh, for Mino and San to pull up if they skate well. But they will have to do that in order to be able to pull back into first place. He represents the skating club in Los Angeles in Burbank, California. And he's the Birmingham Figure Skating Club in Birmingham, Alabama. They'll be skating to highlights from Paul Ducas, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, Stephanie Stiegler, and John Zimmerman. On the ice right now is a pair that only been together for a year and a half. They finished fourth at the 96 Nationals, Stephanie Stiegler and John Zimmerman, and they're in fourth place. The story is one of a sorcerer pursuing a young maiden. He keeps after her until she finally succumbs, but at that moment, at the very end of the program, he loses interest and goes poof and makes her disappear. Watch for it. Their opening move, a split, triple twist. Stephanie and John in fourth place going into this free skate. They would love to make a spot on the world team. It would be the first time that they have done that. Most likely they'd have to be in the top three here. Enan Dungeon lead, but Mino and San have yet to skate.
they're acting this beautifully. I think he's an enormous talent, and they've grown together so much so in the past year. It's a delight to see. This is the second season they have done this routine. And experience does pay off. It's also an exceptionally difficult program. By the way, Stephanie's sister and brother, Tiffany and Johnny, won at this year's U.S. Junior Pairs title. So if Stephanie and John were to medal here, it'd be quite a celebration, huh? I think they are so talented. That was exciting. The choreography was interesting. It was creative. It wasn't just the same old thing. And it also, on top of that, it was very difficult for them to create a feeling of unison in a piece of choreography that clearly has two people working in contrapoint to each other. Really wonderful. They play off each other so well. Big Lynn Zimmerman with a big performance in. Jenny Mino and Todd Sand will have to have a large performance here in the free skate when we come back if they are to win. Zimmerman. Stephanie Stiegler, John Zimmerman out of breath, sitting beside their coach, Peter Opegaard. They're the technical merit marks, 5.4 up to 5.7. Th those are very, very nice marks. Remember, they lost a couple of the elements there, which, uh, which hurt them. But look at this, these side-by-side triple toe jumps now these are hard and necessary and look at the step back and the lean and both of them unfortunately didn't make it but it didn't disrupt the overall flow of the program since they got up quickly and moved right onward so the presentation marks 5.6 up to 5.8 so Stiegler and Zimmerman pull into second place right behind Ina and Dungeon there are the defending champions, Jenny Mino and Todd Sand. They're in second place after a disastrous short program. They explained to us what went wrong. Um, I think we just we started out the program very well, and we were happy with the opening of the program and kind of put it on cruise control, and I just uh, lost my concentration on the lift and messed around a little bit, which caused us to get a little late and then rush the dust spiral, and I was trying to get it done before the music. And It's just one of those things, you know, it happens. I think we were a little shocked. Um, that's not something that we even do at home. We don't make mistakes like that. And to do that as a national championship, of course, we were shocked by that. But I think maybe it was a wake-up call for us, and it was something maybe good that happened here and not at the World Championship. Please welcome Jenny Mino and Todd Sand. They'll have to move beyond thinking about the mistakes in the short program. They've been in this situation before. A year ago, they were in second place behind Ina and Dungeon going into their free skate, and they won their third consecutive national championship. Now trying for number four, Jenny Mino and Todd Sand. improved in every aspect of their skating, their difficulty, their unison, their artistry, they've really got it all. And this will tell the story, their side-by-side -side triple toe loop. And Todd doubled that triple jump, a mistake on a major element.
along. So many people were already talking about the world championships. Last year, Mino and San captured a bronze medal in Edmonton. But they find themselves in fight for their lives here against Ina and Dungeon, who lead right now. Stiegler and Zimmerman are in second place. Hartzell, Hartzell in third. Of course, Lions and Wells still to skate. And we're in third after the short program. Skating to the music of Rachmaninoff. Very uncluttered choreography, very clean, classic, emotional line. Choreographed by John Nix and Leanne Miller. performing some very wonderful moments in it and also some difficult problems well based on the crowd reaction it's hard to tell who their choice is the judges will have to make a choice can Mino and Sand win number four one of the points is that their energy wasn't as great their athleticism wasn't as great but they were awfully good we'll have their marks when we come back to Nashville Welcome back, everyone, along with Peggy Fleming and Dick Button. I'm Terry Gannon. We are looking at the scores for Mino and Sand. Their technical merit marks, 5.4 up to 5.8. As they try to overtake Ina and Dungeon at the top. Now look at this pair of moves. Side by side, triple toes. There they go. He doubled on the left. I don't know if everybody saw that, but it was not a required element, but it was not completed well. A markdown. And there was what a jump that they always need. A throw double axle, and usually do. This time it was single. Is it enough to cost them the title? They sit along John Nix, their coach. Their marks for presentation here, Dick. 5.6 up to 5.9. And those are not good enough to overtake Ina and Dungeon. Mino and Sand in second place. <laughs> and a look backstage, Jason Dungeon just finding out 
that they are still in first place. That's a major hurdle out of the way. You may be looking at 1997 U.S. Pairs champions, but there is one pair left to skate, and they have a chance. They captured a bronze medal at last year's Nationals, and a 10th place finish at the Worlds, Shelby Lyons and Brian Wells in third place. Their costumes reflect the music they're skating to, Mandalvian Suite. And they need these very difficult moves. I think he just did a double. I don't know, sometimes these happen so, so fast. fast. We can't even see them. How can we expect everybody at home to follow too? Please, will the slow motion camera help me? <laughs> Imagine being a judge. Of course, that's one of the problems and difficulties in judging, is that you take your eyes off, off, your, off the skating for one second to mark your marks down, and you miss something. But don't miss this. Beautiful throw double action. That was as clean and as steady as they come. Lions and Wells in third place heading into this free skate. So theoretically, if they were to win this, they would win the overall competition. Ian and Dungeon in the lead ahead of Mino and Sand. Very interesting combination. Spread Eagle spirals into this throw triple loop. Ah. And I think that one mistake there will be enough to keep them out of the challenge to first place. This is an unusual move. He's in a spread eagle position on this death spiral. Never puts his pivot foot in the ice to make a circle. got together back in 1994 when Bryant went on a cross-country search for the perfect partner. He says that he found one in Shelby. Side by side, triple top has not. That is not going to help them. They have to think about just holding on the third place and trying to be a part of that world team. Right now, Stiegler and Zimmerman hold that spot. Good units. 
Bridge in there. The Lions and Wells right now just thinking about holding on to third place and being a part of that world team. We'll find out what the judges think. And yeah, unofficially, those are the champions right now. Jason Dungeon, Kyoko Ina, second place the last three years. This is the year. How about their perseverance? Welcome back to Nashville. There are the technical merit marks for Lions and Wells, 5.3 up to 5.7. And a concerned look on their faces. I'm sorry. The presentation marks, and they're not good enough. 5.3 up to 5.7 as well. So that drops Lions and Wells from third to fourth place behind Stiegler and Zimmerman. I'm sorry. And there are your new champions, Coco Ina and Jason Dungeon. And a look at the final standings here at the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championships in pairs. Ina and Dungeon, the gold. Mino and Sands' run ends at three. Stiegler and Zimmerman will stand on the podium capturing bronze, and that's your world team, folks. The top three will skate in Lausanne. Glendis and Guzman finish in sixth. Right now, Leslie Vizzer is with the champions. Thanks, Terry. Well, after, after three straight silvers, they won the title and had a monumental battle to do it. Congratulations to Kyoko and Jason. Kyoko, first to you. Were you not going to lose this title tonight after last year? Um, well, we came into it hoping that we weren't going to lose it, and uh, we were leading after the short, so we didn't want to get our hopes up too high, and we just went out and did the best job that we could, and I think we did. What about the early part of your program was so strong? After you hit the side-by-side -side triples, did you say we're there? Um, not really. you got to keep your, your mind in what you're doing, and you don't want to make mistakes. That's what happened to us in the short, and I didn't want to give them any chance to, uh, to top us tonight. So. Yeah, you didn't let up. And now looking ahead to the world, you finished six months before. Do, can you get on the podium this time? Um, I don't want to get my hopes of again up too high, but, uh, you know, we're looking at a top three finish at Worlds. Hopefully we'll be able to do a performance like we did tonight. Well, it's very strong, and you'll enjoy Lausanne. <laughs> Congratulations. Back to you, Terry. Leslie, an impressive performance tonight from Mina and Dungeon, but take a couple of costly mistakes from Mino and Sand. And this one, when Todd doubled instead of doing a triple side-by-side -side toe loop. And here, Jenny only did a single axle in the throw double axle move, something that is always spectacular and that they really needed. And Jenny and Todd have graciously made their way over right now to have a word with Leslie Visser. Leslie? A tough night for the defending champions, Terry. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what happened on your jumps this evening? Um, well, actually, we just didn't skate our best tonight. Um, I don't know why. And I think that Ian and Dungeon skated very well tonight. Um, and we're really looking forward to the World Championships. Uh, we think that we will improve uh, our skating there. And we've had a good season so far. They're disappointed today, but we will see them at the World Championships. And for Ian and Dungeon, it's been an arduous path for three straight years, ever so close, and now their dream is a reality. 